When you're comparing smartphones as significant and expensive as the iPhone 10 and Galaxy S9, it helps to have a little help. Hi. Hi. I'm Mr. Mobile. This is John Rettinger. And we're here to finish the comparison we already started at Techno Buffalo. We have a winner. Wow, fun new format. Look, we're in, well, I'm on a new channel. I'm talking to you directly. I'm not a disembodied voice, and I have a friend. Listen, one more time, folks. If you missed part one of this comparison, pretty crucial components of the phone experience covered. Build, software, camera, not in that order, in reverse order. It's over at Techno Buffalo. Go see it in the proper order at the Techno Buffalo YouTube channel. Oh, and also be sure to subscribe to Techno Buffalo on YouTube so you don't miss the killer videos John and his team are putting out. So now that we've established that, and now that we have people coming here for part two, we're covering one major category. Like that's, that's it before we get to subjective opinions. And that's a category called intangibles. That's a category name you came up with at Techno Buffalo. It's true. Can you tell us what it means? Yeah, it means the things that are intangible. Duh. It's like an inflammable. It's the stuff that makes the phone experience unique. That you can't really break out into its own category. What makes the Galaxy S9 Plus, the S9 Plus, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10. And so I'll start. Can I start there? Please. So obviously there are a lot of things that make this phone unique. And I think intangibly speaking, this is the phone that a lot of Apple faithful were waiting for and hoping for. I think if you weren't expecting a radical iOS redesign, you were hoping for a bezel-less design. You were hoping for wireless charging. You are hoping for the removal of that home button or at least moving it somewhere else. And Apple delivered that with the iPhone 10. So a lot of intangibles here. I think the, where you start is with the notch. You're starting with Face ID. And you're getting a lot with that. Well, you love or hate the notch. We talked about that. Um, video, yeah. Check it out. Um, but what, what the notch is going to give you is, is really Face ID. Mm -hmm. And with Face ID, it sounds gimmicky, the commercials are beyond ridiculous, but it does work very well. Like much better than you would expect. And that makes the experience unique because you almost forget that your phone has ever been locked. Before we get too far away from that, I do, I, we should just say right up here that I think it works a lot better than the Samsung solution, which is a combination of factors. It's a hybrid thing. We've got the iris scanner for, the, for a very secure side of the Samsung experience, but you can set with, uh, what's it called? It's an intelligent scan, yeah. right? You can set it to fall back on the less secure face unlock, which is faster, but it's still not as fast, simultaneously fast and secure as the iPhone 10. Yeah, so my experience with Samsung was it worked almost 100% of the time, but was never as fast. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a big intangible feature. Things like Apple Pay, obviously, mm -hmm. are a big one. If you've ever had two phones sitting on a desk and you've heard the vibration from the Galaxy S9 or really most Android phones versus the vibration coming out of the Taptic engine, mm -hmm. that's a subtle, huge difference. The only thing I've seen come close in Android is the LG V30 and the, and the, and the Note 8, but still, the iPhone still runs away it, with it. it. It does make a difference. And I mean, I think other intangibly things that you finally have with the iPhone, you finally have wireless charging. You do. Um, Qi wireless charging, to Qi. be specific. And can I talk about annoying intangibles? Uh, like, I wish you would. Slightly about the iPhone. Please do, because I'm going to run away with it on the S9, okay. so go ahead. So fast charge capable, but if you want a fast charge, Apple's happy to sell you accessories that do not come included. That's an annoying intangible. If you own a MacBook and you want to charge your iPhone, Apple's happy to let you do that for a $25 charge to get a USB-C to the lightning cable. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are cheaper options, but first party wise, that's ridiculous that that stuff is not included with the phone. Yeah. And I mean, I was like, I was going to piggyback on that for the, for, for the S9 intangibles, right? Because that's... The, with the S9 Plus and the S9, you get a fast charger in the box, as you always have for generations and generations of, of Samsung devices. It is rather criminal that you don't get that on the much more expensive iPhone 10. To continue, did you want to hit the ecosystem before we, we left? The ecosystem is a huge benefit, and I think a big reason a lot of people get the iPhone. Things like your, your iMessages, the way it seamlessly works if you use a Mac, your backup and restore. The ecosystem is incredible right. and unmatched in the industry. And here's the thing, and this has the, been the recurring theme of this entire two-part comparison. When we switch over to looking at the S9 and the S9 Plus, you just get an overwhelming avalanche of options 
and features yeah. and aspect. Um, we've talked about the fast charger bit already. Um, Bixby, not better than Siri. But that's not saying a huge amount. It's not. Not saying a huge amount. But Google Assistant is better than them both. Not even close. And you can run Google Assistant. You can't necessarily map the button to Google Assistant without a hack, but you can run Google Assistant on the S9 Plus, just like you can on any Android phone. Still talking about the S9 here, you have the option to turn it into a stand in computer using DeX. DeX. Which I haven't played much with the new touchpad yet, but there is a new accessory for DeX, so that's not dead. IP68 ingress protection versus the iPhone's IP67. I'm not even calling that an advantage. I'm just saying. Oh, it's one ingress protection better. <laughs> of, of course. And then you look at the standard itself and you're like, wait, there's no, the menu, there's so much leeway in manufacturer selection that this, these could actually mean the same thing. It's only assumed to be better. There's a port on here that, have you ever seen this before? This round port on the bottom? I remember it vaguely. I'm tired of this joke and everyone's made it. But the headphone jack. If you care about it, I don't really, it came in handy on a flight once really. Also, face ID, very good. Fingerprint scanner still useful at times. And finally in a good location? Yes, right below the camera where it belongs and you can use it as a trackpad to drop the notification shade, which I always call out because I always love it. I wish the iPhone 10 had found space for a fingerprint scanner in addition to the excellent face ID. So there that is. Samsung Pay, you mentioned Apple Pay. Well, Samsung Pay works in pretty much all the same locations. Wait, no, it works in every location that has a credit card reader. What am I missing? Expandable storage. Pop a micro SD card in there. Wireless fast charging, yeah, but fast charging with dual mode. So I can still drop this on Starbucks pads that haven't gotten the PMA to Qi update. And got, I can wirelessly charge with this. I can't do it with the iPhone. Whoa, I'm out of breath. What's going I, on? I think also of note, yeah. extra band support that oh, you're LTE. getting. For LTE? for LTE that you're getting with the Galaxy S9, especially relevant, I think, if you're on T-Mobile. Yes. I, I personally live in a fringe T-Mobile area, barely get service with the iPhone 10, with the Galaxy S9 Plus. I get two bars, I know it doesn't mean that much, but what it means for me is I can consistently and regularly make phone calls without it dropping. Right. So that may, that may be, a, be a big, you know, intangible for a lot of folks. The very definition of intangible, yeah. signal and strength. That was a big, <laughs> That was a big, intangibly large uh, category. Nice. You like that? Yeah, I do. So it should seem, at least to me, it's, it seems obvious, but who is your pick for intangibles? Not just you, it is obvious. My pick for intangibles, the Galaxy S9 wins the intangibles for me. What about you? Yeah, Galaxy, for everything you just said, the Galaxy S9 wins the intangibles for me too. So before we move on here, I do, I think this, we do want to make this clear, right? Um, you guys are probably asking all about battery and performance, you know, that kind of nebulous category name. We touched on those an awful lot in the first part of the video. Go back and check it out. But also, they're roughly equivalent. There wasn't much of a point belaboring it when the equivalency is, is pretty close. A45, A11. Yeah, oh, and then the Exynos build of the yeah. other Samsung. So you can do the side-by-side, -side, the app launch thing, which is great. If you're into that, uh, that that's cool. Honestly, I think uh, from a day-to-day -day standpoint, these, these are comparable. I will say the iPhone is a little bit more fluid, as is typically the case, um, but Samsung has never made a faster phone than this. And then battery, we're just kind of... It was e equally not awesome? Equally unimpressive. Average. Yeah. Uh, we should say the iPhone 10 is a bit older, and so it probably did better in the initial review if you go back and watch the initial reviews. So we've taken a breath, and uh, now before we get to my favorite category, the uh, the cop-out category. Uh, I want to throw it to John so he can give us what many of you have come for. The winner! The final score. So we ran through four hotly contested landmine categories and we came to a winner by a score of five to three, Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus is our winner. We have one last thing, which is why we brought you all the way over here, and that's because so many people, whenever we talk about this stuff as objectively as possible, want to know our subjective opinion. Yep. What do you like? But John, what do you like to carry? What's your thing? What fits into your life? And same for me. So, which of us wants to go first? And Take it. Yeah? This is your channel. Okay. And you're the guest, so you get to lead us out. Um, I don't want to come off as hating the iPhone 10. I think that's pretty clear. If I carried an iOS device, I would carry the iPhone 10, and I think I'd like it an awful lot. Not least of all, because it reminds me of the Palm Pre. RIP, pour a little out. But um, the way I use my phones, from 
occasionally dropping it on strange wireless chargers, to watching movies on a flight, to using two apps side by side, to setting up my home screen exactly the way I want it, to occasionally shooting some really super slow motion video, which I actually do quite a lot. There's no contest for me. It's, it, the, the S9 fits into, and also on, on the whole Android, fits into my life and my lifestyle a lot better than does any iPhone, even the iPhone 10, which one more time, I still rather enjoy. But the uh, S9 is what, uh, is what would live in my pocket, given the choice. We've taken all the objective stuff out. What do you like? And I feel like for, for years, I've been pleading with Apple to make a different phone. And I'll be, I would have liked if iOS got that overhaul. We may not see that for a few more years. But we got the hardware overhaul. We've got an incredible screen, albeit built by Samsung. You've got a beautifully designed phone still, you know, with the notch. There are caveats to all of this. But the question that we asked each other was if both these phones were sitting next to each other and you were going out for a weekend or going out for the night, which one are you grabbing? And I think for me, I would grab the iPhone 10. And this is the first time in a while I've been able to say that with an iPhone. And perhaps I'm still in awe of the newness, despite being out for a few months of the iPhone 10 because it's so radical departure from what Apple's had in the past. Mm -hmm. But I think I would still pick the iPhone 10. The, if I'm, I'm out with my kids a lot, so I'm not fiddling with camera settings. I gotta snap a quick picture. Um, things like that make the ease of use a lot more simple with the iPhone. That's fair. So I'm, I'm gonna embrace the hate. I'm gonna embrace the name calling, but I'm being honest. This was, a, this was an exhausting but fun ride. I don't feel as dirty as I thought I was gonna do I know. with this one. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I feel all right. We'll see what the comments are. We will, and by the way, let us know in the comments if you, if you enjoyed the, the interaction. This is a break from the normal Mr. Mobile format. And one more time, just in case you're tuning in late for whatever reason, does that happen on YouTube? Who knows? If you missed the first half of this comparison, there's a lot of meat in there. And I'm gonna ask John Rettinger to tell us where you can find that. Yeah, so go over to our YouTube channel, it's Techno Buffalo. Techno Buffalo. We'll link to it down below. Hit a subscribe, we got a ton, we got a ton of tech content. Smash coming. that like button. Smash it, just destroy it. If you wanna see John Rettinger, come on over to the Boston studio. Uh, let me know, in the same place. I don't mind flying east. Come on over. I just need an invitation. Consider yourself invited. I feel like you, I put you on the spot and you had to. Hey man. Anyone who wears that shirt is always welcome in the Boston studio. I like to say rock that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Stay mobile. Stay frosty. My friends. Folks, remember, whether you get the S9 Plus or the iPhone 10, you're getting a smudgy glass slab. So get ahead of the grease with a custom vinyl skin from today's sponsor. dbrand has the best phone skins in the business, from the flashy to the classy, from the carbon to the camo. Customize your dbrand skins at the link in the description below and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you.